watching The Rose Table, and this is a Midsummer Night's Dream. We're in ancient Greece where I stumbled into a forest and- Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. There is. Skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. I'm sure that'll be fine. Who's ready for dinner under the moonlight where the wild time grows? I set my party up in the back corner of my yard with a chandelier hung from my tree, the idea being that we sat down in the middle of a forest for a glamorous fairy dinner. The play often talks of moonlight, so I held the party during a full moon. The color scheme for A Midsummer Night's Dream was green and purple. There are lots of references in the play to the color violet, and I thought that the light green tablecloth would look so ethereal in the moonlight. I made the chandelier by wrapping fairy lights from plow and hearth around a bare wreath and hung it with twine. It looked absolutely magical. On the table, I used my gorgeous real wood chargers that my dad made for my Snow White dinner party. Thanks, Dad! These are real wood slices, treated and sealed, and they add such a special outdoorsy element to any party. I chose violet napkins tied with thyme from my garden for the play's line where the wild thyme grows. I styled the table with a moss runner to be for the forest floor and branch forks for those forest vibes. For the flowers, I arranged a mix of white and yellow roses, status, Alstromeria, iris, and dark and light purple stock. The party got even more enchanting after the sun went down and the colors looked gorgeous under the moonlight. Katie Rose, what are you most excited for about this dinner? Well, I'm really excited about having honeycomb with a cheese plate and for everybody to have what is now me and my mom's favorite cake of all time, the chocolate lavender dream cake. Ooh, so excited. Yeah. Oh. For when the sun goes down and it's just so magical. We've got like the twinkling chandelier. It's gonna be a beautiful night. It is gonna be beautiful. Well, this looks gorgeous and we're all so excited. For the cocktail, I served love in idleness. This is Chambord liqueur, elderflower liqueur, champagne, and an amarina cherry. It's the prettiest color and hardly even tastes like alcohol. I really wanted an elderflower cocktail for midsummer because that seemed like such a good fairy ingredient. I named this drink after the flower that Puck uses as a sort of love potion on the Athenians. Fitting for a cocktail, don't you think? Mm. For the first course, I served a midsummer cheese board celebrating natural flavors, summer fruits, and honey because fairies love sweet things. If you think an epic cheese board looks difficult, don't be intimidated. Start with four to five cheeses, fill in with charcuterie, fruit, and crackers, and tuck herbs where you can. This board has ricotta with lingonberry jam, herbed goat cheese, an English cheddar since Shakespeare was English, mascarpone cheese with a sour cherry jam, I snuck cherries into every single course of midsummer, and a spicy three pepper gouda because I wanted something that was unexpected, just like the twists and turns in the play. I added prosciutto and mustard seed salami to pay homage to the fairy mustard seed. This board also had peaches, grapes, strawberries, and the most beautiful pink lemonade blueberries. I added honeycomb and whipped honey, herbed Marcona almonds from Coleman Cellars, plus earthy rosemary and wild seed crackers. It was almost too pretty to eat, and yet we managed. There wasn't a single bite left on this board by the main course. This hungry! Oh, <laughs> the so whipped honey with this and then the honeycomb with that on a oh, cracker. Oh, okay, good. Because it's yes. like that sweet, savory. Oh, for the main course, I served kissing cherries chicken, named after my favorite line in the play, those lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow. This is grilled airline chicken breast topped with an incredible cherry balsamic sauce served on a bed of rosemary roasted potatoes. The sauce is perfect for a midsummer party to take advantage of cherry season. The sauce only takes a few minutes on the stove and perfumes your house with the most incredible aroma of cherries, balsamic vinegar, garlic, and rosemary. It's so good. So the cherry sauce is really the point. So normally you would pair white wine with chicken, but I thought a good Pinot Noir to bring out like the cherry notes of the sauce. So cheers! Cheers! Love. Yay! Twilight hours upon us. I know. Yeah. It's like the witching hour. Oh, the witching hour. Yeah. Really witchy. Oh, oh, yes. really witchy. Yes. So I want to talk yeah. about this too. I'm so obsessed. So oh, I got yeah, these I lights this. from uh, from Plow and Hearth. It's actually uh, fairy lights paired with like a almost like a branchy light, and I just yeah. put that on. A wreath, I found it, Michael's, like you were just saying, and just hung it up with some twine. I'm not a crafty Crafty. person at all. I I figured you were. Food is 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 my art. Your art. Yeah. Yeah. 
Speaking of food art, I served a chocolate lavender dream cake for dessert. Now if you don't like lavender, bear with me. My mom very much dislikes lavender and she declared that this was the best cake she's ever had. This is three layers of dark chocolate cake with lavender vanilla frosting piled high with juicy blackberries and fresh summer cherries. Are you seeing the cherry theme yet? The dark chocolate pairs magically with the lavender, which doesn't overpower the cake. I served this with lavender vanilla coffee from Prayer Lavender Farm, and my friends loved the cake so much that they had a second slice off camera. There's no better compliment than that. Oh my gosh, this cake is so good. This lavender. chocolate lavender cake is rocking my world. And you don't even Guys, like lavender. Lavender's not my favorite. It's not my favorite scent or flavor, but this is one of my favorite cakes I've ever tried. Yay. I will say, <laughs> like, I, uh, that cheese board though, that won it for me. I that could just was... shovel the honeycomb into my mouth all day long. <laughs> I just love the thought that was put into everything, like mm -hmm. the kissing cherry chicken. So enchanting, right? Like what better could you ask for than delicious food, magic juice with good company? <laughs> like just mm -hmm. such a night full of mirth. It's such a wonderful theme too. Like mm -hmm. people could do this at home. This is such a good idea yes. mm -hmm. yeah. to yeah. to anyone that wants to do it's something so like this. It's such a good summer theme. It's been the most magical. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, I feel so glamorous, and I, I've had so much yes, fun. Yes, like, being able to dress up is incredible. We've had so much fun being able to dress up. For me, the most, the most impressive aspect of of the dinner is that is the timing of it. It's like the the moonlight. It's a full moon, which like she was so smart that she picked it per the date perfectly because it's full moon tonight. What's more Shakespeare? Super Shakespeare narrative here. Yes. And I'm so thankful. Yeah. Shout out to Willie Shakespeare. Yes, Willie Shakespeare. <laughs> Just like the feeling, like the aura. Very, um, very Shakespeare. I have watched Katie Rose's um, videos before and I saw the Jonas Brothers sucker video that she did. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself when I watched it, I was like, that looks like a dream. I wanna be on <laughs> um, her uh, her channel one day. And now here I am and it's a dream. It meant summer night dream. Come true. And so literally history happened. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. first theater based mm -hmm. you know, dinner. And mm -hmm. we got to make the thing yeah. happen. A Midsummer Night's Dream is right. Like an exploration of love, right? Mm -hmm. Lovers going into the forest to kind of escape and you know to find refuge and we get to do that tonight at this dinner yeah. like, you know escape into the forest and just have a feast and make a memory it's so magical mm -hmm. and it's, it's great like kids get into sorry it there was a fire so there's a firefly there is oh gosh, a firefly. where we have fireflies where it's right there it's like in front of the couch i see it oh my oh, god it's so magical i'm so happy i'm here y'all everyone's oh. oh, trying to catch a firefly <laughs> I love even the scent of everything. I don't know if y'all noticed, but like the the irises mm -hmm. smell so oh, yeah. incredible. Irises, yeah. that's and like the lavender <laughs> and the thyme was like blowing around, and even the herbs from the herb yeah. garden, the lavender coffee. It's just like this has been like a super aromatic yeah. Yeah. dinner. This has just been such a magical night, and everyone keeps saying that word, but it is super magical. The outfits, the place settings, the chandelier. I just love this moonlight realness it is giving us. Love anytime I'm outdoors with my friends, to me like this is just like ultimate rose table right now is, yeah. is yes. when we're just enjoying under the moonlight. Yeah. Everything's very dreamy and magical, mm -hmm. like uh, like a Midsummer Night's Dream should be. I kind of want to like, dance under the moonlight a little bit. Should I turn on some music? I think we should. Yeah? I have a stance. No! Come on, no.